I'm sorry. I've just had a notice through to say that uh, there's been no sound coming through. So with apologies for a technical hitch, let me start again. Welcome you to prayer and invite you to pray with me. And we're going to read some verses from Psalm 119, beginning at the 25th verse. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your ordinances before me. I cling to your decrees, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I run the way of your commandments, for you enlarge my understanding. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees, and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See. I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness give me life. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I shall have an answer for those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your ordinances. I will keep your law continually, for ever and ever. I shall walk at liberty, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your decrees before kings, and shall not be put to shame. I find my delight in your commandments, because I love them. I revere your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray together. O God of peace and Lord of love, help us to be quiet, relaxed and receptive today, accepting the inpouring of yourself so that in the depths of our nature and being, your healing grace may take from us any anxious cares, any unworthy thoughts and all ingratitude. Forgive us, cleanse us and renew us, that our hearts may be at rest in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So may Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We read today... Continuing in 2 Corinthians, the end of chapter 1, beginning at the 23rd verse. But I call on God as witness against me. It was to spare you that I did not come again to Corinth. I do not mean to imply that we lord it over your faith. Rather, we are workers with you for your joy, because you stand firm in the faith. So I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. For if I cause you pain... Who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I am confident about all of you, that my joy would be the joy of all of you. For I wrote out of much distress and anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. But if anyone has caused pain... He has not caused it to me, but to some extent, not to exaggerate it, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person. So now instead, 
you should forgive and console him so that he may not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this reason, to test you and to know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not unaware or ignorant of his designs. When I came to Troas to proclaim the good news of Christ, a door was opened for me in the Lord, but my mind could not rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said farewell to them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not peddlers of God's word like so many, but in Christ we speak as persons of sincerity, as persons sent from God and standing in his presence. Thanks be to God for his word. In this passage, Paul speaks about somebody who's, um, if not excommunicated, then certainly is under what we might call church discipline. This is somebody who's uh, been uh, rehabilitated in some ways, or perhaps not fully. They've obviously done something wrong that's caused offence within the church. And Paul says, look, you've punished this person now for long enough. It's OK um, to encourage somebody to turn back from their evil ways. It's, in, it's sufficient for us to point out, or for the church there, to point out when somebody has done something that will not please God. That's all fine. But to permanently keep somebody out in the cold risks losing them from Christian fellowship. It also can create in us a sense of spiritual arrogance or condescension, as if somehow we're better than everybody else. And of course it uh, darkens our own spiritual eyes to the faults that we ourselves may possess. The role of encouraging somebody to turn back from what they've done, which they may well know to be wrong, is to comfort and to restore, not to punish. It is uh, to help them to know again the joy of fellowship, not only with other Christians, but also ultimately with the Lord. And it's a difficult and it's a fine line that the Corinthians are being asked to tread. Uh, to discern when punishment is helpful and when restoration is vital and when forgiveness and love are needed, as well as saying to somebody, you've done wrong and there are limits uh, for a while, for a time, on how you can serve within uh, the uh, community of faith. And those who are bound together by baptism are called by Paul uh, to share in encouraging one another. Um, love, which Paul writes about elsewhere in his co uh, correspondence with the Corinthians, covers a multitude of sins and it keeps no record of wrong. But ultimately, uh, the fragrance that he speaks of at the end of the chapter about knowing Christ and comes from us who reflect his character is the fragrance of love being seen in action. It's it's something that's beautiful when you not only um, rebuke but restore and when you see somebody turn back again to Jesus. That was a problem for Paul in Corinth. It's sometimes a problem today. But ultimately, it needs to be done in relationship and for the purpose of forgiveness and consolation. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together for ourselves, for our world, for those we know and love. Firstly today we pray for the family of the 16 year old young man who was stabbed and died in Corby last night. We pray for family, we thank God that there are already three people who are in custody and being interviewed in association with this crime and we remember that knife crime is a scourge in our society particularly in inner cities and we pray for all those who are working uh, to bring an end to this senseless violence particularly we pray for the work of the ascension trust street pastors and school pastors and all those involved in seeking to uh, educate and encourage uh, young people uh, to turn away uh, from uh, these evil acts. We pray for the family. We pray that there will be those who can draw alongside and comfort in their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for race relations, not just in America, but here in the United Kingdom, one year on from the anniversary of the murder of George Floyd. And we pray, Father, that there will continue to be a recognition of our need to do more to bring justice, particularly for those involved and with those involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray uh, for righteousness to be seen to be done. And we ask, Lord, that you will prosper the hands of those who work for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of BMS World Mission as it seeks uh, to encourage us to pray for North Korea and we pray for Marshal Kim Jong-un and we remember that recently he has apologised to South Korea following the North's killing of a supposed defector. We pray that the Lord will be at work in the North Korean leader's heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for Bangladesh and for those who, as Christians, receive discrimination because of their faith from their employers. We pray that they would receive equal pay and that as perhaps some are forced to leave their employment and start their own small businesses, that those businesses would be fruitful and would provide for their families and for their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace, that you are our light in darkness, our strength in weakness, and our comfort in sorrow. Be with us this day. Fill us with your Spirit's power, that we may take your healing love into a world in need. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you and with those whom you love, and with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. Until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless.